Hey, welcome to another edition of HC Daily, our podcast journey with you throughout the, throughout the entire month. Uh, we're doing a, a study on Peter, uh, the Apostle Peter, in, in our weekend services. And so we're just looking at different events uh, you know, of his life. And so we have Jeff Forrester here. It's good to be here. Yes, Chris Zarba, and then Chris Hansen, who's yeah, been on staff almost as long as Jeff has been. Almost, here, right? yeah, yeah, true. So uh, I thought it'd be fun to ask you and put you on the spot and say, <laughs> what is one fact that uh, it's a seldom known fact. Nobody really knows this about you. Go ahead and share it with the world. Ooh. No one knows it about me. Oh, man. Little, uh, I'm pretty open. But, little, uh, little known fact. I listen to 90s hip-hop every day. <laughs> 90s hip-hop? I, I okay. do. Every okay. day? Every day. Wow. wow. Just about. I might miss a day Yeah, what's one of yeah. your favorite 90s hip-hop songs? I don't know songs? if I should Uh-oh. say. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know if I should say right here. Fresh Prince. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Well, yeah, that, we'll there, go with there, that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, with that being said, let's thanks, jump Chris. into the Bible. Yeah, Chris is working really hard to keep his job. That's what he's doing. That's great. <laughs> so, Acts chapter 10 is what we're going to be reading today. So, grab a Bible uh, if you can, and uh, whether it's uh, the Bible app, U version, or, or one in, in, that you're going to hold in your hands, a paper one. And we're going to start reading in uh, Acts chapter 10. We're going to start reading in 24. We'll have to give you some context, but we'll start reading in 24. It says, they arrived in Caesarea the following day. Cornelius was waiting for them and had called together his relatives and his close friends. As Peter entered his home, Cornelius fell at his feet and worshiped him. But Peter pulled him up and said, stand up. I'm a human being just like you. So they talked together and went inside where many others were assembled. And Peter told them, You know it is against our laws for a Jewish man to enter a Gentile home like this or to associate with you. But God has shown me that I should no longer think of anyone as impure or unclean. So I came without objection as soon as I was sent for. Now tell me why you sent for me. And Cornelius replied, Four days ago I was praying in my house about this same time, three o'clock in the afternoon, and suddenly a man in dazzling clothes was standing in front of me. He told me, Cornelius, your prayer has been heard and your gifts to the poor have been noticed by God. Now send messengers to Joppa and summon a man named Simon Peter. He's staying in the home of Simon, a tanner who lives near the seashore. So I sent for you at once, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here waiting before God to hear the message the Lord has given you. And then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. And this is the message of good news for for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened through Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism. And you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. And then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we as apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. And they put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. And then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. And we were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. And he is the one all the prophets testified about saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. So to give you a little bit of context, uh, Cornelius was a Roman centurion. That means that he oversaw a division, a a whole group, uh, over a hundred sometimes soldiers, and he was like their commanding officer. So uh, centurions typically were highly uh, viewed. They usually were a little bit more uh, prosperous and had more resources. They always had servants and that kind of thing. Cornelius was a good man. He was a devout man. He prayed regularly. He was extremely generous, and he was praying to God that God would give him uh, uh, some kind of blessing and awareness. He wanted to draw closer to God, but he was not yet a Christian. He didn't know about Jesus, and so then that's when the angel came and said, listen, send for Simon Peter, and he'll come and tell you. Well, right before this, you should go read the rest of this passage, because Simon Peter, being a Jewish man, he wasn't supposed to go talk to, to Gentiles. Up to this point, there were no non-Jewish Christians. And so Peter, uh, the, 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 uh, God comes to Peter and says, I need you to do this. And Peter keeps saying, no. He keeps telling God, no, I mm. can't break my religious beliefs. I can't break my cultural things. And then finally, after the third time, Peter realizes God's really serious about this. 
And it's in that context that he packs up and goes to Caesarea to share the gospel with this Gentile, who is the very first Gentile who ever becomes a Christian. Yeah, so that's the context. Absolutely. And, and looking back, you know, some 2,000 years ago, it's easy for me, at least, when I first read something like this and go, this had to be addressed. Like this had, yeah. like God's love has no bounds. But then, you know, look around for a moment and I'm like, yeah, it has to be addressed. It's not that hard to believe because we're still struggling with it, I think, today. Yeah. Um, you know, I remember being at an event with my, my family and they were doing giveaways. And so we had obviously tried to get, you know, raffled into the giveaways and all that. And uh, they called the one of the winners and it was someone from my my kids school and so they they instinctively one of my kids screamed like they got it like they <laughs> just like in front of everyone so we're like Shh, yes they got it they got it they're like that person got it like yes like they didn't deserve it yes yeah, exactly yeah. and um and i you know we can do that too a lot of times like yeah. you know, that guy like you, you really want me to love that guy or god loves that like it's it's hard to believe you yeah. know at times and I remember uh, someone that I went to high school with. I, I don't think I had seen them since high school. Uh, walked into our church building one day, and I saw them in the lobby, said hi and everything, and they're like, you're here? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, yeah, I am. They're like, y- you're here? You're in and church? I go, yeah, and I was like, uh, yeah, plot twist, um, I'm I'm on staff here. Like, I, I work here. <laughs> and they were like, what? Like, it was just like, that guy? Like, the, and, and I think that's, um, you know, a lot of this and a reason something like this is so important to that's be said. That's Pastor Chris Hansen to you. Yeah, yeah, that's <laughs> Watch your tone yeah. with me, buddy. And uh, <laughs> But that that can be like the, this guy's in church, this guy is someone that God loves, like, because yeah. we can – you know, in our own selfishness and our own, you know, faults and that kind of stuff can get pretty discriminatory with who we believe God should show love to. Yeah, yeah. And um, well, I think this is dangerous. The, this is one of the greatest barriers to the the forward movement of the gospel at that time, mm. because every person who'd followed Jesus was Jewish. Every person that was a follower of Jesus was Jewish. They com- clearly saw Jesus as the Jewish Messiah. And didn't have a concept that he was the Messiah for the whole world. There's a, the, I love using the Life Application Study Bible. It's one of my favorite study Bibles. And there's a note that says, steeped in Jewish tradition and filled with certain biases, Peter was convinced his views on Gentiles were correct, and he needed mm. a three-part vision from God to change his mind. <laughs> right? Isn't that a yeah. great phrase? It so is. So how often are we convinced that our opinion about a certain kind of person yeah. is correct? Yeah. yeah, and we need an encounter with Jesus to change our minds. Yeah, you know, you know, this is one of my favorite examples in the New Testament. Let me talk about Peter for a second. Uh, we see the humility that Jesus has taught Peter mm-hmm. come through finally, because right, right, if maybe finally, <laughs> yeah, finally. right. <laughs> but like the first thing that we see in the passage that you read was that uh, you know here's Cornelius wanting to show reverence to Peter because he's the great Peter at this point. Right. And yet Peter says, no, man, stand up. I'm a normal guy, yeah. which is, you know, a lot of times we call Peter Saint Peter, you know, and yeah. in, in the same way we're like, oh, he was a saint. And, and if Peter were standing in front of us, he would say the same thing yeah. to Cornelius. He's like, dude, I'm, I'm a normal guy. Uh, yeah. After all, we're doing this podcast. We certainly know by now right. Peter is certainly have his, has his flaws. Mm-hmm. And so yeah. Peter, in humility, this Roman centurion says that. And then the other thing that's wonderful about this is that we read through the scriptures that Paul himself, who wrote most of the New Testament, had to uh, rebuke Peter. Yeah, he so, still winds up struggling with this yeah, later. Yeah, he, he, he struggles with it later because yeah. he didn't want to eat with Gentiles. Yeah. So even though that he accepted Gentiles for salvation, it was another instance where he went into a home and then they sort of like had separate lunch tables. Yeah. And so Paul had to rebuke Peter and said, dude, what are you doing? This is not right. And, and, and Peter then conceded uh, in humility again, yeah. you know, even though Paul wasn't part of the twelve. Yeah. You know, Peter, so I'm giving Peter total props here. Yeah. And I want to say this. Most people who know me know this, that one of my one of my worst things that one of my biggest pet peeves in my whole life is uh, is legalism. Mm-hmm. So people who judge other people in Christian love. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the prim, <laughs> primarily the thing that Jesus spoke against. Right. You know, Pharisees imposing Christian love. Yeah. yeah. You know, Pharisees imposing religious rules on people you know, posturing themselves a better than them, you know, and, and then sort of just, you know, judging others, complaining, you know, it, it exists every day uh, among Christians, which irritates me. But what, what's mm-hmm. really great here is that Peter's having to unlearn something that he's learned in his whole lifetime. So back in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse number 15, uh, God clearly states that he chooses the Jewish people. 
So God, God says, no, I, I favor the Jewish people. They're my people, not Gentiles. And by the way, Gentiles means anybody who's not Jewish. Not Jewish, right. right? And, and, and so for, for 2,000 years from the time of Abraham all the way up until the New Testament, this has been the case. Jesus comes along, changes the rules, and Peter's having to unlearn that. And, he, and in humility, he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, it's just it's mind-blowing. Yeah, it, I, I think that that Galatians 2 moment really shows how deep-seated our biases are, how, how, how deep they are in us, um, because they, they're so culturally embedded in us. But Christ is drawing out the better version, the better idea, mm-hmm. the better concept. Mm-hmm. So that's what that's about. Yeah, and I used to I used this example before um, of you know the idea that like oh we have full access to God and God's love is there for us but the next person we somehow create this ninja warrior course and it's like all right make it through that make it impossible for the hoops and things that they have to jump through because mm-hmm. we don't want them at times we have to kind of watch our own heart we don't want them at times and right. there's a, a famous quote of uh, you know there's a pastor to a lot of celebrities uh, he's Justin Bieber's pastor quote unquote. Um, and so, uh, which that's another, you know, secret about me. I do love just, I'm not closeted about that, but I love Justin Bieber's music, yeah, but, um, so do I. uh, it's great. He, he's great. a believer. Yeah, yeah I, I absolutely <laughs> am. And so, uh, but he's, you know, his pastor and he says this, this famous quote of the ground is level at the foot of the cross. Mm-hmm. Like, so for all of us, and, and he talks about, you know, this idea of celebrities and, and people that maybe we see on TV or through our phones on social media. It's so easy to dehumanize them yeah. and all, put them in a in a spot where we believe that, oh, no, they can't possibly earn love. When really, I think if we boil it down, like we have a lot more in common with each other than we don't. We're all trying to navigate life in the best way possible. Mm-hmm. And so to be able to kind of give some proximity to it, like I think that's a big part is, you know, that another famous quote, proximity provides perspective. Mm-hmm. And I think so often we... We try to just judge people or, you know, add some legalistic bounds to them and, and God's love to mm-hmm, them mm-hmm. instead of just having a conversation or getting to know them or understand their story, where they're coming from, yeah. and how God's love is equally available and accessible to them as well. Right. For the Jews at that time to walk into a Gentile's home and sit down and have dinner with them was full-on scandalous. Yeah. If any Jew in any town would have done it, it would have made it in the newspapers, right? Mm. This is a horrifically uh, 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 countercultural move there. So for God to do this with Peter, it was a very substantial change he had to do in Peter's heart. And so I think that when you and I are invited to do the same, to share the gospel, I think one of the most profound spiritual growth moments any Christian have is to discover that God loves your enemies every bit as much as he loves you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That those people that you can't stand, if you had never been born, Jesus still would have given his life for those people. Yeah. Right? And so uh-huh. that whole idea, the <laughs> ground is level at the cross, is, yeah. is so true. And this is why Peter says in verse 34, I, I've discovered very clearly God doesn't show favorites. Right. 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 So if you were to give our listeners just one final thought for today, something they can take home with them, what would you say? Yeah, I think I would ask ourselves the question, am I withholding God's love from anyone around me? It's a great wow. question. It's a great question. That's a great question. Who well, invited that guy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? yeah. That's a tough question. Yeah, yeah that's great. All right, well, let, let's pray as we close. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for your love in our lives. And Lord, we thank you for demonstrating for us very clearly that you love everyone and help us to uh, view others through your eyes. So, Father, we thank you, we love you, we ask and we pray all these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time at uh, HG Daily.